Hey guys, so welcome to the final uh, property, um, yeah, landlord's update for 2020. It's been an interesting year, hasn't it? I mean, phew, who would have thought coming out of the election in 19, thinking everything was positive, things started getting back, and then where am I? And things have changed. But amazingly, actually, it's been quite an interesting year because it hasn't been certainly as bad as everything, you know, made it, and as it could have been, um, and certainly could have been made out to be. Um, it's, it's actually been a relatively positive um, year, which is extraordinary. I mean, and, and to be fair, if it's, been a, it's a, if it's affected you, then yeah, it is a pretty bad year. But obviously for the most part, if it hasn't, you know, between furlough and a lot of the schemes, I know a lot of people have been able to get back to, you know, spending time with their family. Let's face it, you haven't had the chance. And you know, for me, if it's the first time in my life that I haven't, I shouldn't say my life, but, but it is pretty much my first time since I my working life that I haven't travelled. You know, I've always been a traveller. Um, and, you know, all of a sudden now I haven't travelled since March. You know, so it's extraordinary to think that's the case. And, and you know, the kids, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see when I start travelling back to the UK again. But anyway, so let's take a look. So effectively, um, 2020, you know, we can put that behind us. Um, unfortunately, I do think that the COVID side of things is still with us. You know, the vaccines are not going to roll out that quickly and they take a while. And, you know, so it's probably going to be this year, 2021 will still be another similar year where it'll be working from home, vaccine, lockdowns, all those sort of things um, until we get it under control. You know, that's just part and parcel. However, from a property market perspective, things are looking pretty good. The unemployment rate hasn't shot up anywhere near what we thought, you know, and certainly the furlough scheme seems to have kept that down. And the universal credits has kept that down. So, so those sort of things have been very good. So unemployment, even redundancies, you know, they only in the last month they only climbed 0.1%. Sorry, one, uh, yeah, 0.1%. Um, and you know, which is pretty extraordinary. You know, you would expect probably um, more. So, you know, so we, we saw a big jump, but then the next jump hasn't happened, which which is great news. So it does mean that through the winter, things are going to be okay. Yeah, the support mechanisms that are in there are in place and that's quite good. So, you know, things are looking pretty good for 2021. I mean, look, my prediction is minus 3% and I'm still holding that. I know a lot of people are going into the sort of plus um, realm saying plus fives, plus eight is the, the most I've seen. A couple are down at like the minus 13.3, that sort of thing. But for the most part, and, and a lot of that is old data, that's from sort of June, July. Um, so they may well... Um, considering what's happened, because we were expecting things to slow down over, over winter, and they really haven't. They've kept going, and it appears that they are going to keep going, but they have stopped the stamp duty. So they've said, no, stamp duty is going to end and be replaced, um, or not replaced, but start again You know, um, in, in April, which I expected that anyway. So you know, I think that from that perspective, things are looking pretty good. We're certainly through the winter, and then we're into the spring, and then often you get the spring bounce, which is good news. Um, Closer to home, look guys, there's a couple of issues that I just want to raise. So the first is the cladding, the external wall systems and the EWS1 form, which basically means that if you've got a, a property that has cladding, you know, a, a tower or something like that, it's not, not if it's a house or that, if it's, it's just a normal, you know, or it's a couple of stories, that not really a problem, but you're talking sort of five stories or more, I think it's 18 meters or whatever it is, but, um, but in any case, yeah, the cladding, if it's an issue, the great thing is the government now has stepped in to provide funding. So I just want to explain this. So you probably may have read about this. If you haven't, that's fine. Um, you may get a request to sign a form that's a de minimis state aid form, okay? What that is, is that it's an EU directive, the level playing field stuff, which basically says that if you um, get state aid, you can no, get no more than 200,000 euros. Now, that should be more than enough to cover the cladding. So what it means is the government is made available funds um, to sort this out, which means you won't have to come up with the money. The government is actually giving you the money as a grant. Yeah, so it's not a loan, it's, it's a grant. They will give you the money. In fact, they won't give you the money, they'll give the money to your block manager to arrange it on your behalf. Okay, so it's technically you taking the money, but it's being put towards that cladding issue, which is great because that now frees up a lot of buildings um, that, I mean, let's face it, if you had cladding issues, you weren't able to sell. Worse, even if you didn't have cladding issues, if you were trying to get the EW1S, EWS1 form, then 
you had to wait in line. And the waiting list could be six, 12, 18 months because there just wasn't enough people who could do the assessments. So that was creating a massive, you know, if you like, you know, stoppage, bottleneck in the industry. So they've sort of, they haven't solved it, but they've largely um, put that to bed or they will put it to bed. So it can still slow things down, but at least you're not having to come up with the money now. So that's good news. So if you get the form, make sure you fill it out. It'll say it needs to be done by a certain date. So get it back ASAP. If you're not sure, give the team a call and we can make sure you understand what it is. But the great thing is it's the government jumping in and saying, here's the money to pay that. You don't need to come up with it. Okay. Now there is conditions whether you live in the property or you rent the property out. Um, but you know, for the most part, just fill out the form and, um, and that should be fine. Yeah. So that's the cladding. The other one is the communal heat and power. And I just want to raise this and just flag it because the, the, there's not a solution right now, and I don't think we're gonna get a solution for maybe a year or two years, but effectively what's happened is we've got this thing called CHP, communal heat and power, which is where basically what happens is they have a massive piece of equipment that sits down in the basement of your building, and that provides you know, heating to the communal areas and heating to your, your thing, you know, comfort heating and things like that. So, um, and it will provide, and at the same time, it provides the hot water and all these sort of things, okay? so. Part of that, that capital equipment, yeah, as an owner, you that'll come out of the service charge and has to be repaired and et cetera, et cetera. Sinking fund to replace it down the right down the track. But the actual usage that your tenant uses is their responsibility. The challenge is this: these CHP companies or companies running this, the energy companies for the most part, are, are effectively saying, well, our relationship is with you, the leaseholder, and you're responsible. So if your tenant doesn't pay, we come looking to you. Now, the problem is, is you have no idea whether that's the case, whether they've paid the bill or not. They're not getting the bills, you know? So, and, and this is the problem is it's not one case fits all. It's different companies do different things, take different approaches, that sort of thing, yeah? So some companies are chasing after the tenant and they're going after the tenant, but some are saying, we don't care. We're going after you and you have to pay and then you can chase the tenant. So this is creating a massive issue because what's happening is a lot of these companies they don't bill monthly, they don't bill you know, three monthly. Sometimes it can be six months or 12 months after the tenants left that they go, oh, they haven't been paying their bills. Um, so now we're gonna come after you. So it's a huge issue because we have to pay back the deposit within 10 working days, yeah? So that's pretty much, otherwise if we don't and we don't have a reason for that, then they can pay it back anyway and then we've got to chase it. Yeah, so there's a huge issues. And this is the problem when we rush through legislation and that sort of thing, and we don't think through these sort of things. So it's it for me, it's a potential issue that's coming up. I believe it will be dealt with, you know, at a class level, a class action level where it'll be one of the, you know, who knows, it could be one of the general interests, you know, the, the landlord forums, associations, putting forward the case, okay? Um, and taking control of the case. We'll see, yeah, but it may not be now. If you're affected by it, then talk to us. We're probably already talking to you anyway, but just be aware of it. If you've got the communal heat and power, it's only if you've got the CHP systems, okay, which is on a lot of the new buildings because they're energy efficient, they're more, you know, all that sort of stuff, climate change friendly, blah, blah, blah. So that's one of the issues that is coming up. It's, you know, it's one of those sort of things that's creeping up. It's only affecting a few people, but I think it's gonna come more and more to the front of things, yeah? Cool, so what else? So basically coming more down into to, you know, us and what's happening with EasyTrack. So look, we've got um, Dawn Parker I've mentioned is joined us, so she's now Deve Director of um, Business um, Development. She's working really well. Obviously Dawn was with us before and so she left and she's now come back. Um, Tim now has moved into the compliance role, so he's head of compliance. So he's overseeing and making sure every file is compliant and everything we're doing is compliant and keeping, you know, because there's massive changes happening and there's continuous changing, you know. So we're staying abreast of all that stuff so you guys don't necessarily have to, okay. But obviously through this forum, I'll update you on the things that I think you need to know. Um, we've got the move to Arthur. So it's taken a while. We've been getting the data right, integrations and, you know, the websites and all this sort of stuff. It's a whole massive program that we're bringing into that. So that's likely to come in, we're moving to Arthur January 1st, but actually the, the websites and all that will be done by the end of January. So we're sort of running two systems in that. Um, so that's good news because actually it means it's a lot easier for us, but it's a lot more transparent for you guys. You can have your own app and you can see when funds have come in and all that sort of stuff. So you don't need to necessarily email, uh, email us about things. You can just jump on the app and see what we see effectively. Okay, so that's good news. 
Um, and that's, yeah, that's all happening. So there's a lot of move towards prop tech and you're gonna see this a lot more. And look, it's, it's one of my passions. So, you know, we're gonna be, as a company, I want us to be on the cutting edge of those sort of things. Um, and, and unfortunately, that means that some of the platforms we have been using, you know, that were cutting edge, now aren't cutting edge anymore and we're moving on from those and moving on to the next one. That's just the, the nature of prop tech now. Um, we've got the tiers system. So the various tiers, effortless gold, effortless plus, and the standard tier. And, and basically we're gonna be moving everyone across that. Most people are across on it now. If you're not, then you're one of the stragglers and we'll be contacting you in the new year in the sort of first three months of the years to get you onto the new, new tiers. But you can go onto the website, the onboarding website, or we'll, we'll email you out um, when the time is and then we can have a chat about um, what, what's best for you in your circumstances. But you know, one of the big things I think now is compliance is just so stringent and the courts are so on top of things that you have to. And that's one of the reasons why we've got Tim there as Director of Compliance, because we need that, yeah? And you guys need that. We need someone whose sole job is to sit there and just be that person that goes through and looks at everything, yeah? Um, because that's where things are going from. Look guys, um, in terms of you know education and keeping up to date, you've got my, um, my YouTube um, site, Brett's Property Rants. Um, and that I'm, I'm posting to a lot. We're changing the nature of that with the, the live stream once a week. We're gonna have a whiteboard session once a week and we're gonna have interviews with mates in the industry and people who I look up to and all that sort of thing and you know opinions and that sort of stuff and even people who I don't agree with I wanna get on the show so we can have a bit of a discussion about their point and my point and that sort of stuff. So that should be quite good. Um, and you know, I'm really looking forward to next year because I think um, a lot of the, the stuff that we've been doing this year is gonna start to come together. Yeah. Um, if you need anything, you can go on the blog, uh, gladfish.com website forward slash blog. We've got all the blogs that are constantly updated. Um, so there's huge amounts of information. Plus, you can email me at webinars at gladfish.com and I'm happy to record other videos um, just to explain whatever it is, whatever questions you've got. Okay. Um, but yeah, look, guys, we're all, um, you know, the team's great. We're, you know, it's, it's, it's actually been a really good year for the team. We've got rid of a lot of the, the dead wood. Um, that were perhaps drag, you know, dragging their feet. Um, and now actually the team's really on fire and I think that's, you're gonna see that. And I think probably you've already seen that this year, but I think we're, next year we're gonna be really ready for that. Um, so yeah, that's it for me um, for 2020. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Have a great one with your family. Hopefully, well, it's not like we can travel anywhere. We're all locked down, so it'll be a family event. You know, we're, uh, we're in Singapore. Um, unfortunately, normally we go to Australia, but we're staying in Singapore this year. So. I've, Got the uh, slides out the front, um, you know, obviously we've got 30 degree weather in Singapore, so it works out quite well. Um, but yeah, no, the kids are having a great time or they're about to be on holidays on Friday. So guys, thank you very much. And, you know, just want to thank you for, for you know, picking us and actually, you know, choosing to stay with us and being part of the Easy Track family. And we really appreciate it, you know. And I think, you know, it's great now with Arlene, um, you know, and I, you know, we love the business, you know, we, we absolutely love this business. We love you guys as landlords. And, um, you know, and, and I think next year, really what we want to do is just make everything that more effortless from your perspective, you know, by being the filter so you don't have to go out there and, you know, know everything week, you know, that's what we're doing. Um, but yeah, guys, have a fantastic um, rest of 2020 and a good little break and we'll see you back. I'm back on the 6th of uh, January. Um, so we'll see you then. All right, guys, have a great one. See you, bye.